Hi everyone, I'm going to be working through Unit 11 with you today, which is Ratio and Proportion. The first thing I'd like you to do, please, is to work through this prior knowledge check that's on the screen now. So if you please pause the video and give yourself time to go through each of the questions and then play the video once you've finished and I'll work through the solutions with you. Okay, I'm going to use a split screen here so that you can see both the questions and the solutions that I'm going to be working through at the same time. It is a little bit small for the original questions, but hopefully you know as you've worked through them already, okay? So for question 1A, it says 10 times something gives you 60. So 10 multiplied by something is equal to 60, okay? Well, I know 6 lots of 10s are in 60, so I know 10 times 6 is 60 okay hopefully that was easy enough for you part b so something multiplied by 9 gives you 900 so how many nines are in 900 well there's a hundred of them it's going to be a hundred multiplied by 9 gives you 900 okay please make sure you're checking and correcting your answers as you go so 2a says find the highest common factor the hef of each pair of numbers Okay, the first one in part A is 25 and 35. So what you need to do is you're going to need to find the factors of both 25, all the factor pairs of both 25 and 35, and see which is the highest one that's in both. So if we start with 25, we're going to have 1 and 25. 2 isn't because it's not an even number. 3 also doesn't go into 25. 4 doesn't go into 25, but 5 does, and it goes in 5 times. Okay, as the second number here is 5, we know now that we can stop and there are no more factor pairs, okay? So that was 25. We then need to do it for 35 the same. You're going to have to excuse my hand going across the screen. I'm left-handed, so it's hard for me to do it without covering the work. So you've got 35. So we have 1 and 35, because 1 times 35 is 35. 2 isn't a factor because 35 is not even. 3, it isn't a factor either. 4 isn't. 5 is. So 5 times 7 makes 35. And then we know in between this is a 6. So is 6 a factor? Well, no. 6 isn't a factor of 35. And then we get back to 7 again so we can stop. So now we know we found all the factors of 35 as well. The question's asking for the highest common factor. So we need the highest number that is in both. And that will be 5 in this case, okay? 5 shows in both. So the HEF of 25 and 35 is 5. Probably good to write HEF is 5, okay? Part B then asks us to find the highest common factor of 24 and 40. And what I'd suggest doing at this point, if you weren't sure what you would what you needed to do when you were doing this on your own. I'd pause the video now that you've seen part A being completed. Try and complete it for part B to find the highest common factor of 24 and 40, and then play the video again for the rest of the solution. Okay, so if we're looking at 24 and 40, again, I'm going to start with 24, and I'm going to find all my factor pairs of 24. Okay, 1 and 24, that's always going to be there. The 1 and whatever the number is, is always going to be a factor pair. It is an even number now, so it's going to be 2 and 12, because 2 times 12 makes 24. Then we look at 3. How many 3s go into 24, or do they go into 24 at all? Well, yes, they do. 3 and 8. Okay, then you look at 4. Does 4 go into 24? Yes, 4 and 6 make 24. And then you're on 5, 5 doesn't go into 24, and then you're back to 6, okay? So you know you're done there. The next one then you need to do is 40. So again, 1 and 40 always. It's an even number, so it's going to be 2 and 20. 3 isn't a factor of 40. 4 is a factor of 40. You're going to have 4 and 10. 5 is, 5 and 8 make 40. 6 isn't. 7 isn't, and then you're back to 8 again. Okay, so now again, what you need to do is say, okay, what is the highest number that's in both of these lists of factor pairs? 
Okay, in this case, it's going to be 8. So then you write the HDF is 8. Okay, and that's question 2 completed. Now we're going to move on to question 3. So if you've got some multiplication. Actually, it's all division practice here. So we've got 3A, which is 24 kilograms divided by 3. The 24 divided by 3 is what you need to do, and that is going to be 8. Okay, and make sure you put your units, your kilograms there. So 24 divided by 3 is 8 kilograms. Part B, you need to do 72 millimetres. 72 millimetres divided by 8. Okay, so this is just your time tables knowledge. It's how many 8s go into 72. So what is 72 divided by 8? And that is 9. And again, millimetres, because you've got your units in there. C is a little bit trickier, because you've got a decimal number. You've got £2.80 divided by 4. And it's up to you how you do this. I often think, well... If I times this by 10, it's going to be 28 divided by 4. I know that 28 divided by 4 is 7. I made this number 10 times bigger, so I'm going to need to make my answer 10 times smaller. So divide 7 by 10, and my answer is going to be 0 0.7 pounds or 70p. However you've written it is fine, as long as you've got a unit and it's put correctly. Pot D. You have 300 grams divided by 5. Again, an easy way to do this, if I take off a 0 there, if I divide that by 10 and I'm left with 30, I know 30 divided by 5 is 6. So very easily, I know 30 divided by 5 is 6. It's actually 300 divided by 5. So I need to times my answer by 10, and that gives me 60, and it's grams. Okay? Going on to question four. So 4a is 17.5 divided by 5. I suggest you use the bus stop method here. I'm going to do my workings at the side. So I've got 17.5 in my bus stop, and I'm dividing that by 5. First thing I say to myself, how many 5s go into 1? Or zero, so I need to carry the one next to the seven. How many fives go into 17? Well, five, 10, 15 is three, and then it would move on to 20, so I'd need to stop there. So I'll have two remaining. So my two goes next to my five. My decimals must line up, and then I say how many fives into 25, and that's five. So my answer is 3.5. Okay? So that is my final answer there, 3.5. The next one that you have, part B, is 5.4 multiplied by 6. Okay, I'd set this out using the column method, so I'm going to do this over here. 5.4 multiplied by 6, and I'm putting the 6 under the 5 there because that's the 1's column. Okay, line up your decimals ready for your answer. And then you need to start by doing 6 times 4, okay? 6 times 4 is 24. So I put my 4 here, and I'm going to carry my 2 at the bottom there into my 1's column. Then I'm going to do 6 times 5, which is 30. Add the 2 that I carried, and that gives me 32. So I put 32 there, and my answer is therefore 32.4. Okay? Question 5. The 5a is 40 divided by 5 multiplied by 3. Okay, so 40 divided by 5 is 8. So I'm left with 8 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. Okay. Same with the next one, part B. We've got 36 divided by 4 multiplied by 8. 
36 divided by 4 is 9. Then we're left with 9 multiplied by 8, which is 72. Okay? Moving on. Question 6. Question 6 asked you what fraction of each diagram is shaded. Okay, so for question 6a, the first thing I would do is my denominator. The bottom number, my denominator, is the easiest thing to do because all I say is, well, how many parts are in that shape? That shape has been split into four parts, so four is my denominator. How many parts are shaded? One. One is my numerator, my top number. Okay, so what fraction of it is shaded? It's one quarter for 6a. Again, if you didn't get that right, I suggest you pause in the video again now, having a go at the next one, and then starting it up again to continue to see if you've got that right. Now I've done an example for you. Okay, so the next one, again, my bottom number first. Well, that shape has been split into five different pieces. So five is my denominator, and three of them are shaded. So three is my numerator. Okay, and it's as simple as that for that question. Question seven. It says copy and complete. So it's telling you that three fifths is equal to something over 20. Okay, so it's equivalent fractions here. Three fifths is equal to something over 20. Well, what do I times five by to get to 20? I times that by four. So that means to get an equivalent fraction, I need to times my 3 by 4 as well. And therefore, I'll know it's equivalent. And 3 times by 4 is 12. So my answer is 12 20 12 over 20. Part B, we have 24 over 32. And we're saying that's equivalent to 3 over something. That's what it's told us so far. So I need to work out what do I do to 24 to get to 3. It's smaller, so I'm going to divide it by something. Well, I divide it by 8. 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. So I need to do the same thing with the 32. I need to do 32 divided by 8, and that is 4. So my answer there, my equivalent fraction there, is 3 quarters. Okay? Question 8 is the question on fluency with measures. So it's asked you for 8A, how many grams in one kilogram? Okay, it's hopefully something that you know there's a thousand. Okay, a thousand grams is equal to one kilogram. And then part B, how many milliliters in one liter? Again, something you'll know, hopefully. If not, you do need to learn it. There's a thousand millilitres in one litre. Okay? The last question, question nine. What it's asked you is to find what is the scale factor of this enlargement. Okay, I'm going to do a quick rough sketch of what they've given you. I'm not going to use a ruler or anything. It's just so that you can kind of follow with me. So they've given you two rectangles, one's labelled A, one's labelled B. You're told that this side is 5 centimetres and this side is 3 centimetres. And then on shape B, this is 10 centimetres and this is 6 centimetres. So all you need to do in this case is find two sides that are comparable. Okay, and they've actually given you both these sides, they've both got comparable figures in each shape. Okay, so you need to say, well, what do I do? To 5 centimetres to get it to 10 centimetres, I multiply by 2. You can check if that's correct by checking for the 3 centimetres. Do I multiply 3 by 2 to get to 6? Yes, I do. Therefore, my scale factor is 2. And then that, that question completed. Okay? So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to return to the PowerPoint. I'm going to keep my visualiser up as well, so hopefully you can see that okay. And I'm going to do some examples for you on writing and simplifying a ratio. A lot of the questions that you have coming up will be on writing and simplifying ratios. So I'm going to go through this example now and hopefully that will help for your practice. Okay, so question one. 
For each of the following, write down the ratio of red squares to green circles. Give your ratios in their simplest form. Okay, so in question 1a, I've got two red squares and I've got four green squares. So I've just counted them up. How many red, how many green? Okay, the two red squares, three green circles. So my ratio, because it said the ratio of red squares to green circles, so it's going to be in that order, is going to be two to four. So I've written out my ratio now. However, that isn't in its simplest form. So that's my first step. Just count up your squares and write your ratio. Remember, you're doing red to green. So it's going to be in that order. Four to two would be wrong. It must be two to four. And then from there, I now need to simplify. Okay, and I simplify by, find the high, by finding the highest common factor of two and four, just like we did previously in the fluency section. Okay, the highest common factor of two and four is two. Okay, they're both divisible by two. Two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. Therefore, my simplified ratio is one to two. For part B, again, it's red to green, so I'm going to count up my red squares first. I've got eight of them, so eight is where I'm going to start. Then I count up my green circles. I have two of them. So it's 8 to 2. That, again, is not in its simplest form. And a quick way I can know that in this example, because they're both even, and that's 2. I know they're both divisible at least by 2. Okay, So I do need to check that first. So as I know they're both divisible by 2, I'm going to divide them both by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So my simplified ratio is 4 to 1. And then finally for part C, I need to count up my red squares. Remember the ratio is red to green. I have six red squares. Two, let me just count, four, eight, twelve green circles. So my ratio is six to twelve. Okay? Next step, simplify. I want to know what is my highest common factor. Okay, my, the smallest number here is six. A good quick check at the start is to say, does 6 go into 12? Well, yes, it does. That means that's going to be my highest common factor because there's no bigger number than 6 that is going to go into 6. Okay? 6 is the highest number that can go into 6. So they're both divisible by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. So my ratio there is 1 to 2 again. Okay? So we're turning back to the slideshow. I just need to get rid of this for a second. What I'd like you to do now, please, is I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at the two questions that are on the screen. Once you've had a go at these questions, then play the video again and I will go through the solutions with you. Okay, but for now, please pause the video and have a go at those questions. Okay, well done for having a go at those. I've now put the solutions up on the left-hand side. But again, like before, I'm going to go through the solutions with you on the visualizer. So question two, 2A. The question says, write down each ratio of red tins to yellow tins. So again, remember, you must put it in the order that they've asked you. Well, that's always with ratio questions. So it's asked you from red to yellow. There is one red tin to two yellow tins. So that's your answer, one to two. For part B, you have two red tins to five yellow tins. So your answer there would be two to five. Okay, that was a simple question. There was no need to simplify anything. They couldn't be simplified anyway, and the question didn't ask you to do this. Okay, question three 
says, draw tints to show these ratios of red to yellow. Part A was four to three. Okay, I'm not going to do that for you. Hopefully you can see from the example on the screen, there's four, they've drawn four red cans first, because the red goes first, it's red to yellow, the ratio. And then they've drawn three yellow cans after, because the yellow came second. Again, part B, they've used the same numbers, but they've flipped them round now. The three belongs to the red. So the ratio is three to four. So we've got three red to then four yellow cans. Okay? And then the discussion says, is the ratio four to three the same as three to four? Well, no, it isn't. Because like I said before, in four to three, red, there are four red. In three to four, there are three red. So there's a different amount of red and yellow cans in each of those ratios, okay? It does affect your answer if they're a different way around. So make sure you read it in the order that they give you the, the thing that you're comparing, okay? Lovely. So going back now, I'd like you please to have a go. Uh, oh no, question four, we need to go through that one, don't we? Sorry, bear with me here. So we also need to go through question four. So question four says, a necklace has 30 beads. There is one purple bead for every four blue beads. How many beads are A, purple, and B, blue? Okay, so having a look, you've got 30 beads all together. They've given you a little diagram there to visualize it, but that isn't the final answer because you can't just count those because there's not 30 beads there in total. So let me just get the visualizer up once again and I will go through that solution with you. Okay, so just ignore this three here because I didn't do the answer for that one. So for question four, so we've got 30 beads in total and our ratio is one to four. So we have 30 beads and we're sharing it in a ratio of one to four. Okay, one belonging to purple and four belonging to blue. So what you need to do here, and you may have struggled with this one because I haven't done an example like this just yet, is the first thing you need to do is add your ratios together. So if I add one and four together, that gives me five. One plus four is five. Now to work out what one part of that ratio would be worth, I need to take my total amount, which is 30, and divide it by my total ratio, which was five. So 30 divided by five is six, okay? So that tells me what one part is worth, okay? So my purple, I'm just gonna write that again underneath. My purple was worth one part of the ratio. So to get that, I would do one times my six, which is what I know the value of one part is now, which would be six. Then I'm going to do, to find my blue, I'm going to do 4 times by my 6, which is 24. So there'd be 24 blue beads. Okay? Quick check, add them together. 24 and 6 is 30, therefore my answer is correct. Okay? There's four, uh, 6 purple beads and 24 blue beads. That's the answer to that question. Okay, so carrying on. Could you now please, I'm just going to quickly read that key point for you. So it says, you simplify a ratio by making the numbers as small as possible. Divide the numbers in the ratio by their highest common factor. Okay, we've done that so far. We've, I've already done some examples with that. So hopefully you can have a good go at this question, please. So as usual, please pause it, complete all of the, que all of the parts of the question, and then play when you're ready to go through the solution. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the answers for these ones because hopefully you were able to find the highest common factor of each of your pairs of numbers and then simplify the ratios in that way. Okay, and your answers are at the bottom, so I'll just give you a second to mark those.
Okay, so we've now moved on to the problem solving and reasoning. So I'm assessing you now. Hopefully you've got enough knowledge now from what we've looked at to have a go at this question. So please, as before, pause the video, have a good go at this question, and then I'll go through the solutions with you. Okay, so question six. It says the bar charts show the number of gold medals and other medals won at a competition by each group from a gym club. Okay, so we've got number of gold um, medals won and we've got other medals won there as well. Okay, there's two charts. So part A says what is the ratio of gold medals won to other medals won? Write your answer in its simplest form. Okay, you were given a hint here. What do you need to work out before you can find the ratio? So what do we need to work out before we can find it? Well, we need to work out how many were in each group. Okay, so work out how many were in each group. So in group A, I'm just going to call it GA, group A, in the, in the gold medals there were two. In group B, there were three, and in group D, there was one. Okay? So add those together, you have got six. So that's in the gold medals, okay? So that's gold medals. Then we need to do the same, but for the other medals, so group A, we have six. Group B, we have three. Group C, we have five. And group D, we have four. So add those together and we will get 18. So that, I'm going to put that down there. So that's other, other medals, 18. Okay? So our ratio of gold to other, because that's what the questions ask, gold to other before simplifying would be six to 18. Now all we need to do is simplify by finding the highest common factor of 6 and 18. And again, a good check to start. 6 is the smallest number in this ratio, so I'm going to check, does 6 go into 18? Well, 6, 12, 18, yes it does, three times. So my highest common factor is going to be 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So my ratio is going to be 1 to 3. Okay? Part B, it says the club's coach says that they won twice as many other medals as gold medals. Is the coach correct and explain your answer? Okay, so the solution says the coach is, ro is wrong. They won three times as many other medals as gold medals and we know that from our ratio. Our ratio was one to three, which means for every gold medal they won, they won three other medals. So that's three times. If it was twice or double, as it said in uh, part B, it would be one to two, our ratio. Okay, so that's why he's wrong. Okay, so that was just the solution there. So have a go now, please, at question seven. Pause the slide, pause the show, and then you can resume once you've ha got a solution. Okay, so bringing my visualizer up once again. Let me get rid of that piece of paper. So question seven. Hopefully you had a good try at this. So it says, an after school club at a primary school is attended by 32 children. It is run by four adults. The guidelines say that the adult to child ratio should be one to eight. Does the club have enough adults? Okay. So it's telling us the adult to child, so that's the order our ratio goes in, 
is one to eight. So for every eight children, there should be one adult. At the moment, we know that there are four adults and 32 children. So what we need to do is we need to simplify our ratio and see if it gets us back to one to eight. Okay, first thing we check when we're simplifying, does the smaller part of the ratio, is it a factor of the larger part? Yes, four is a factor of 32. Four goes into 32 eight times. Therefore, I'm going to divide both of my numbers by four. Four divided by four is one. 32 divided by four is eight. Therefore, the answer is yes, they do have enough adults, okay? So they have enough adults. Okay, so we'll just put the information they've given us into our ratio, simplified it, and just checked that it's come back to the ratio that they were recommended from the guidelines, okay? That was our Okay, now is your chance, please, to have a go at question eight. You need to find which of the ratios are equivalent, okay? And you've been given a, a hint saying ratios are equivalent if they have the same simplest form. So please pause the video and have a go. Okay. So, the answer is A, B, and D are equivalent, and C and E are equivalent. So, you had to simplify each of those ratios, finding the highest common factors, and then identify which ones have the same simplest form, okay? I'm not going to do each of them for you, because it's, it's quite a time-consuming thing, and I think we've gone through that enough. So, hopefully, once you've simplified them, you are able to see which ones are equivalent, have the same simplest form. I'm just going to do A for you. So if we simplify A, because what I imagine the bit that you may struggle with is finding the highest common factor. Okay? If you have a set of numbers like 36 to 16, you don't necessarily have to find the highest common factor first. They're both divisible by 2. Okay? So if you find it easier to divide them both by 2 first, you can do that. Okay? So 36 divided by 2 is 18, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay, you can see that that isn't its simplest form still. They're both still even, so they're both still at least divisible by 2. So again, I'm going to divide them by 4, uh, by 2, sorry, and that gives me 18 divided by 2, which is 9, 2, 4. 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Okay? And that will be its simplest form. There's no other highest common factor. But if you did do it from the highest common factor route, you would have used 4. Okay, you'd have divided 36 by 4, which would have got you to 9, and 16 by 4, which would have got you to 4. And that's what you had to do for each one to compare. Okay? That was that one. So now please have a go at question 9. It says write each ratio in its simplest form, okay? So each one has to be in its simplest form. And your hint said the highest common factor of 20, 25, and 15 is 5. So divide all the parts by 5, okay? So this time there's an extra number in your ratio. You need to find the highest common factor of all three. So going through the solutions then, solutions are up on the screen for you. You've got, for part A, you should have 4 to 5 to 3. For part B, you should have 6 to 4 to 5. C, you should have 8 to 6 to 5. And D, you should have 2 to 5 to 7. Okay, I'm going to do part A with you, but I'm not going to do all of them because it's the same method once you know what you're doing and the answer is there for you to check. So, uh, part A, 9A. You've been given 20 to 25 to 15. 
hopefully, as you can see, the numbers end in either 0 or 5, you would have known straight away that they were both divisible by 5. But if not, you could have done your factors, your factor pairs over at the side. But I know they're all divisible by 5. So 20 divided by 5 is going to be 4. 25 divided by 5 is 5. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. So my final answer would be 4 to 5 to 3. Okay, I will just actually do part B with you because I, I realise they've given you the hint for that one anyway. So I'll do B with you as well. We start with 36 to 24 to 30. Start by writing the factors of 36 at the side if you like in 24 and 30. But hopefully once you did that or beforehand you were able to see that the highest common factor is 6. So I have to divide each of them by 6. 36 divided by 6 is 6, 24 divided by 6 is 4, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. And that gets you to your final answer there. Okay? Have a go at question 10 and 11, please. Pause the video. And then you can check your solutions. You need to show that the ratios are equivalent. So you're going to need to be simplifying them all to show that they have the same simplified answer. Okay, so they're your answers. Hopefully, once you've found the highest common factor of each of the three numbers that were given in each of your ratios, you were able to see that they were all simplified to 2 to 3 to 5, and therefore, they're all equivalent. Okay, your next question for question 11 gave you a recipe. So I'm going to quickly go through that one with you because it's given you a recipe. It's a little bit different to how you've seen the questions so far, but it's still the same method. Okay, so a recipe for shortbread uses 125 grams of butter. So butter, we've got 125. 55 grams of sugar. Sugar, we've got 55. And 180 grams of flour. So the flour, we have 180. Okay, and it says to you, write the ratio of butter to sugar to flour in its simplest form. So all I did as I went along is I just wrote the information out that the question's given me. From there now, I need to simplify them and find it in its simplest form. As all three of my numbers end in five or zeros, I know they're all divisible by five. So I'm gonna divide each number by five. 125 divided by five is 25. 55 divided by five is 11. And 36 divided by 5 is 3. And 180 divided by 5 is 36. Okay, and that is in my simplest form. There's no other factor that's divisible right into each of those numbers there. Okay, so that's your final answer. You just took the information from the question and then simplified. Okay, the last question I'd like you to try now, please, is this exam style question. Okay, pause the video. Look at your hint and then come back and I'll go through the solution. Okay, so the question said there are 80 marbles in a bag. Of these, 25 are china and the rest are glass. Okay? Write the ratio of china marbles to glass marbles in its simplest form. Okay, so there are 80 in a bag, so 80 total. There are 25, 25 are china, so that's china, and the rest are glass. Okay, and we're writing the ratio from china to glass. So we just need to work out the remaining amount, how many were glass. Okay, so how many are left from 25 to 80? Well, it's going to be 55. So that's not in its simplest form. Both the numbers end in 5, so I know they're both divisible by 5. So 25 divided by 5 is 5, 55 divided by 5 is 11, and that's now my answer in its simplest form.
okay? Hopefully you've understood what we've done today and hopefully that makes sense. We'll move on to 11.2 next and look into ratio and proportion further.